when we're performing trig substitutions, we're always trying to meet um, the form of these Pythagorean identities, like 1 plus a variable thing squared, 1 minus a variable thing squared, or a variable thing squared minus 1. And the problem here is that my variables are mixed up. And what I need to do is express all of these variables with a single squared binomial so that I can do the substitution. And that's called completing the square. So let's just focus on the interior of the square root. And I'm going to rewrite it this way. And again, my goal is to write all those variable pieces, get them all out of a squared binomial. And then there's going to be a side effect to that, and we'll compensate for it. So how could I get all of these variable pieces by squaring a binomial? That binomial would be x plus 2. So this is not quite equal yet. I'm still working on it. Um, if I were to expand that, I would get 5 minus x squared plus 4x plus 4. And compared to what I started with, if I think about distributing that minus sign, I have 4 less than I used to. There's a minus 4 stuck on the original term. So I have to compensate for that by adding 4 back into the expression. So I have to go like this. All right, now it is equal. And I get 9 minus the quantity x plus 2 squared. Um, it might be a good idea to check our work on this. So I have 9 minus x squared plus 4x plus 4. When I distribute the negative 1, I get 9 minus x squared minus 4x minus 4. And that turns into a 5 minus x squared minus 4x, which is what I started with. So this is a useful way of rewriting the interior of the square root. So it looks like a constant minus a variable thing squared. So here we go. I have the square root of 9 minus x plus 2 squared. And when I do my trig substitution, what I'm trying to match here looks like it comes from what I would call the first Pythagorean identity. where if I subtract sine squared theta from both sides, I get 1 minus sine squared theta. So that's a constant minus a variable thing squared. Um, there's one more complication, and that is that 9. I need to be able to factor that out. So when I make my substitution, it's going to be this. Let x plus 2 be 3 times the sine of theta, so that when I square it, I get 9 sine squared theta, and I can factor out that 9. So let's see where our integral is now. I replace x plus 2 with 3 sine theta, and I have 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. I still have to transform the differential dx, which I forgot to write there. So you differentiate both sides of this. I get dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. So replacing that up here, I have 3 cosine theta d theta. And I'm going to factor out a 9 out of a square root, which gives me a 3. And I have a square root of 1 minus sine squared, which is the square root of cosine squared theta times 3 cosine theta d theta. So I get 9 integral of this thing just becomes cosine theta. So I end up with a cosine squared theta d theta. I have to use a uh, identity on this. Cosine squared is 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Let's pull the 1 half out in front. And I end up with a 9 halves times theta plus 1 half sine 2 theta. plus c. Now I've got to transform back to the variable x. So I need to, back here where I made my substitution, I need to solve for theta. So x plus 2 over 3 is equal to sine theta. 
which means theta is the inverse sine x plus 2 over 3. So that's not so bad on this first term. But on the second term, it's going to be problematic. So I have the sine of twice the angle whose sine is x plus 2 over 3. And the only way to deal with that is to use another identity, that 2 theta is a problem. Sin, so I replace sine 2 theta with 2 sine cosine, and the 2 cancels the 1 half. So I have sine theta cosine theta. plus the constant c. So now I've got to find the sine of the angle whose sine is x plus 2 over 3. That's not so bad. But then I need to find the cosine of the angle whose sine is x plus 2 over 3. And that requires a reference triangle. Let's get a picture of theta in here. Theta is the angle whose sine is x plus 2 over 3. So the easiest way to do that is to call the opposite side x plus 2 and the hypotenuse 3. I've got to find the missing side so that I can evaluate the cosine function. So if I don't see it right away, I like to just write it as a question mark and apply the Pythagorean theorem. And question mark squared plus x plus 2 quantity squared is 3 squared. So question mark must be the square root of 9 minus x plus 2 squared, which is, is actually exactly what was inside of our original square root. All right, so that adjacent side is just 9 minus x plus 2 quantity squared. Or if you like, you could write it the way the original square root was written. So my final answer is going to be 9 halves. Theta is the inverse sine x plus 2 over 3, plus sine theta. So sine of the angle whose sine is x plus 2 over 3. That's just x plus 2 over 3, times the cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to end up with a 1 third, or I could just write this over 3 since I'm running out of space. And you could clean that up a little bit just by combining those threes, but there's not much more to do beyond that. And I can put in a plus C to finish it off.